Whoa! What? This scene, oh my god, this is this top one. three coolest <laughs> action moments of all time. What is the movie? All of the background you're seeing is not real. Oh, hi, Mark. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. We got Sam on the couch today instead of Clint. Rip Clint, but you know, I, I got the funnies and uh, <laughs> I got those natty reactions. I have no idea what we're gonna be taking a look at today, except for one thing that I'm super excited about, which is the Mandalorian. Yes. More on that later. Oh, yes. Just wait. Oh, we're starting with the good. Wait, okay, this is a, this that's fully CG. Yes, that's fully CG. And has either of you seen this movie? I don't know what we're looking I at. I love this movie. What is oh, this right. movie? It is a feast for the eyes. What is the movie? Gaunts. Zero. Gaunts is basically just one long fight scene with different monsters. So if you're looking for something more than that, you're gonna be disappointed. If you're looking for one long cool fight scene with monsters, it's all an awesome CG, you're gonna have a great time. It's like this movie You'll basically see. takes all the coolest guns, Spartan lasers, Akira lasers, mostly lasers from pop culture, and <laughs> combines it into really cool monster fight scenarios. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Dude. He just went to town. Wait, hold up. He's this, this dude's multiplying in the air. <laughs> this guy getting chopped and then regrowing is such a cool effect. And it's not that easy to do with complicated models like this. A boolean is when you have one object and you subtract another object from it. So when this guy gets chopped by swords, they're basically booleaning, you know, the different parts of him and then like changing those booleans to regrow stuff. It's like a 3D printer. Yeah, it actually is like a 3D printer. This scene, oh my god, this is this top movie. three coolest <laughs> action moments of all time. But the creativity and the weaponry in this, oh my god, it is so insane. Just wait. Was it gonna slice through him like a lightsaber? Better than that. Better? Upload? What does that mean? Upload where? Huh? To outer space. Wait, what? <laughs> it's a teleportation gun that teleports chunks of the monster away from the monster's body. Oh yeah. my god! He teleported his brain! Imagine if in Star Trek, when they teleported people, they're like, hey, just teleport his brain. That's how we'll kill him. <laughs> so cool. Like, I love that they have to like, come up with like a texture map that's basically just like a cat scanned like brain. Yeah. And that's like just probably an animated texture map that's playing on like a plane as they like, you know, booing oh, away his head. that's one way to do it for sure. Wait, so that's more of like a reverse 3D printing gun. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Somewhere in space, somebody eat is eating a very good Sandwich with some very fine deli meats. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Monster brain deli meat. <laughs> Check out this transition. So he, he's teleporting, right? One slice at a time. It's first person view. What happens when your eyes get teleported? Oh, whoa. It's yeah, so okay. So cool. He's seeing it go, and the moment it hits his eyes, we actually see it cut across the frame, and that's our wipe transition to the Do, next Is there game. some sort of like quantum pairing stuff going on here? How is he able to think when his brain's in another location? Oh, yeah. <laughs> is this cool is this whole movie basically just one giant like reel for the effects company that yep. did it? Yes. Okay, don't show me anymore. I gotta watch this tonight. <laughs> it's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh hi, Mark. Oh wow. Oh, <laughs> classic. Oh, hi, She's probably wondering why are we reacting to this? What are the visual effects? Well, I can't tell. Where are they? <laughs> yeah. They're on a green screen. This entire <laughs> rooftop is a green screen. Here's the thing. For how bad but yet good the, the room is, this green screen is really well done. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, well the done. first time I watched clips of these scenes, like I was like, oh, something's up with it. But I, I instantly forgot about it and stopped like analyzing it. Like it was good enough to where I was just like, oh, maybe the lighting's just a little weird or the camera's weird, but I wasn't like, oh, green screen. Even compared to Hollywood movies, this is pretty solid green screening. Dude, the perfect mirror symmetry of that building behind them. They kind of like rotated their 360 degree image just a little bit. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> For me, the thing that breaks down the most on this is just the lighting and yeah. the edge feather on the actual brick. Especially that shot where he's coming out of the doorway there. Dude, by the way, like, yeah, where does that door lead? <laughs> where does that door lead? It's just, a, it's just a box. What they're doing is, is it looks like a giant panorama that's just at a very far away distance. So there's no parallax from like that house just behind the building and like the buildings off in the distance. Yeah. It's just an image, but it is tracked in 3D space just all at the same distance behind the wall. It's weird, but like it's directed in a way like so it's such a clear vision. It's a good indication of like if you have really clear director vision, you're gonna make something unique. These sets are insane. 
Where do you think they found this uh, warehouse room to uh, film in? Well, judging by the previous Star Wars movies, <laughs> they probably made a giant green screen stage and then filmed everything with the actors having no idea where they were or with the context of what they're doing. But this is a TV show. They don't have time to do all the effects for replacing the background in every single shot. We don't have time for that. Okay, what we're getting at is in this scene, all of the background you're seeing is not real. It is a real-time rendered image on a LED screen. It is not a green screen, and it is not a real set either. There's parts of the set that are real. Pretty much everything in the foreground that the actors are interacting with is real. But you wow. know, if you just go 10 feet beyond that, suddenly, it becomes a fake set. People have done this in the past before, but the thing that makes this revolutionary is that they're able to utilize it with a moving camera. Mm -hmm. The camera they are filming with is 3D tracked and the screen is constantly adjusting the perspective of the background to match the camera's perspective. And that's crazy. And the only way you can do that is by using a real time game engine. This is not done after the fact. This is done frame by frame. So everything the camera is capturing goes through the lens and that's why it looks so natural. The greatest thing about this is that it gives control back to the cinematographers to actually line up their shot. It's a very seamless, very streamlined process and it allowed this whole production to get all these crazy locations on a very small budget. Yeah, it's crazy how you can do interior and exterior scenes with it. At all times, there's a guy with Unreal loaded up on a workstation, and if they are trying to get a certain shot, they literally can just move all the assets on screen exactly. right there before they shoot it. So you can always get a like flawless composition. So we were actually fortunate enough to experience this technology in person. Unreal invited us out to one of their demonstrations with one of their light stages. Now on the stage, they actually had a scene set up. You can see really clearly how the ambient light of this real-time environment that's being rendered in Unreal is actually affecting the lighting on us in the foreground. And the edges look good because there's no like keying that needs to be pulled. Like our hair actually looks correct. The light blooms correctly around us. And most importantly, when you're there acting, you can just look around and see the environment. You don't have to pretend. You can just see it. What's really cool about the stage is it also solves a lot of the common issues you face when filming on a green screen, such as very reflective and glass transparent objects that you can still properly see through. Trying to pull a key on some of this stuff is basically impossible, and this fixes all that. It's so inspiring that like, literally right now, I'm working on a mini version of this that we'll be able to have in our own studio. It won't have the LED walls, but it's gonna have the capability to 3D track a camera in as we're filming in, yeah. in real time. We are making a video about all of that, and if you wanna see it, subscribe. This is what was causing all the fuss. I think it's a child. This is a creature and they can't afford to have, you know, eight episodes of a CG creature like this in every scene. So they have an amazing actual physical puppet. But for shots like this where he's walking down the ramp, that's a CG Baby Yoda. And what's interesting is that they actually fine-tuned and revised the animation of the CG Baby Yoda to be kind of puppet-like to Smart. make it seem like the real puppet the entire time. That's a really common issue you face with visual effects, is very often reality is not what we've been trained to see in movies. You know, squibs, yeah. when people get shot in movies, that's not what real bullet hits look like. There's reality and then there's Hollywood reality, and everyone thinks that Hollywood reality is what things actually look like. So if you make it look like real, they think it looks fake. <laughs> At certain points, you're like, obviously, that's not a living creature. Even with the most flawless rendering and uh, movement and animation, are you, you're never gonna convince someone that it's real. But if you can convince them it's a puppet, well, puppets are real, so now exactly. it's real. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but like pretty much any time you see like Baby Yoda actually walking, it's a CG Baby Yoda. Yeah. So they're currently filming season two of The Mandalorian right now, and there's so much that they learned on making this one that they're basically designing sets around this concept, and I love that idea so much. Oh, I can't wait for season two and how they're just gonna kill it with their sets. It's Oh, we're gonna watch Witcher? All right. Witcher. Dude, I, I like this show, it was a fun one. Man, I haven't actually seen The Witcher on Netflix just yet, so I'm getting a little preview. Geralt, Yennefer. Wow. Wait, hold, no, hold up. Dude, what a huge wait, cast. Wait, you got, the wrong, the you got the wrong show, Christian. Whoa! What? You were saying we should watch the dragon part, Ren, and... <laughs> that's, that's not... Wait, this is The Witcher. Oh yeah, it is. The casting is Hold on up. point. Henry Cavill has made a complete transformation in this character. <laughs> what is this? Nick, what is this? It's The Witcher. It's the Witcher. But like... This is the original Witcher? Okay, so it's a Polish 
Witcher movie that came out in 2001. Yeah. It's the original Witcher. I don't know why you like the show so much, Ren. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the dragon's eye! Uh, that nose, that dank cloud. He's just <laughs> vaping sulfur. <laughs> they probably just had no money to throw out visual effects, let alone anything they're else. Like, should we do the dragon? We, there's no way we can do it well. And they're like, sure. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Come on, that was actually kind of cool. cool. <laughs> Are they rotted there? Did they actually run in front of an explosion? Comp they came thing. out of fire. I assume oh, it was I comped. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was comped. comped. It was comped. What's the coolest thing you can imagine? A dragon explodes, three guys on horses fly out of the flames, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I was tricked. Anyways, uh, if you guys have a TV show, movie scene, a good, bad VFX, doesn't matter, please leave in the comment below. Actually, I have a special request. I want to do a reaction to game cinematics. So if you guys have a game cinematic that shows a really oh cool effect. God. Dude, I've got like 30 video clips stored in my brain, ready to show you. But yeah, leave comments yeah. too, that works. <laughs> I've heard tales of your kind, Witcher. We're very used to seeing dragons in, in shows and movies, and so these dragons, specifically the gold dragon, suffers a little bit. This shot stands out to me as being a little rough, and it's a TV show, I get it. Those CG dragon feet are touching that wall, and you can see like between its toes, the wall is still bright, and it's a little strange. Like, look how dark the dragon's feet are. The dragon's feet are dark because there's no light hitting them. Especially cats. since it's like, you have this huge dragon body almost entirely occluding this hole from all the light. That too. The whole <laughs> yeah. hole should be pretty dark in general exactly. underneath him. The light's coming from that one hole in the cave, and that's basically acting as a giant softbox. Yet the dragon's shadows here are crisp on the wall. It's a little strange having crisp shadows from a giant softbox of a hole. Well, I think the root cause of the shot here, and what makes it seem weird, is the fact that they're blending a, uh, a live action plate that's in a challenging lighting scenario with a CG dragon. Whereas I feel like if you were to reapproach this shot, it would probably be better to make the entire environment 100% CG. When you have a 3D model of a dragon and you're trying to have him go through a live plate, what you're doing is you're guessing the three-dimensional geometry of that space. If you don't get it like spot on, it can start looking a little bit weird where the scene feels flat or flatter than it should be. And that, I think we see that with the feet here. I feel like they blew their entire VFX budget on the opening scene of the first episode. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Boom, nice slice. It's like chopping a crab leg, man. It's great. This was a great scene. Watson? Like yeah. opening the show when I saw this, I was like, oh <laughs> man, this is gonna be great. Look at that. That's cool. See, there, that's yeah, satisfying. See it through his mouth? That's Dude, and bad. then his face there. And great. seeing how like his whole body just kind of like Limp, yeah. limps out. See, that's great though. That's some good cool. VFX. Yeah. That's like in the moment in Gaunt's when his <laughs> brain teleports away. He's like, ah, yeah. Yeah. man, you freaking pulled that that humdinger on me by throwing the original Witcher. <laughs> so I'll never forgive you for that. Hey guys, we have a special message for you. Yeah, that's right. Leap year is today when this video comes out, and we wanted to do something super special. So we went back in time and we grabbed one of the most demanded, one of the coolest items ever. Ever, the anime self-driving car long sleeve. That's right. And uh -huh. it's also going to be paired up with a one-time only retro dashboard magnet. So if yeah. you guys are on the store this weekend and this weekend only, the anime self-driving car long sleeve and the dashboard magnet is going to be available only then. There's a bunch of other stuff on the store. We got backpacks. We got hats. Joggers. Celery. We're selling celery Celery. Now. Seven inch carriage bolts. That's it. We hope you guys head on over to CorridorDigital.store. We've got the anime self-driving car long sleeve back from the vault, as well as a bunch of other really cool stuff. You know, there's been a lot of guests on this show lately, but I gotta say, it's pretty uh, pretty comfy here. I could get used to this. Every Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific, we got a new video coming out. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching, everybody. Clap your hands. Uh -huh.